Good evening. How you doing, everybody? This is Sports Page Show live here. Coming to you, bringing on to you a, be a very special show and a very special guest today. I'm going to bring on Candy Waller of Seawall Sports and Entertainment. I'm excited to bring her on, talk a little bit about the women, the, the powerful women in sports and how she's been doing her thing across the DMV. She's a sports reporter, hosts amongst the shows here on radio and television. And I want to bring her in shortly to talk about some of the things she's doing here today. The Redskins draft was just passed. Uh, she's actually been covering sports, the Nats, uh, Caps fan, Mystics. So she's been all over. I want to bring her in, talk about some of the great things she's doing here in the community here. So I want to just look forward to her coming on today. And she's just joined us. So let me bring her in now. Bear with me one moment. CEO. Thanks for joining us here today. Glad to bring you on. How you doing? Can you yes, hear I me? can. Yeah, I can hear you very well. Welcome Good. to the show. Thanks for joining me here today, and hope everybody's staying safe and your family. And uh, you know, my prayers go out to everybody and your family. Thanks for taking your time out today. I was telling everybody briefly about all the great things you hear you're doing on your show and um, how you're just a representative of the DMV. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started in being a sports reporter. Absolutely. Um, so thank you for having me. Definitely Absolutely. Um, but I am a native Prince George of Prince George's County. So all DMV sports, you name it, I am a fan of. Grew up watching everything. Um, and so maybe about three years ago, um, I, and did I even introduce myself? I'm ripping and running. My no, go ahead and go. Let me let me reintroduce yourself. <laughs> this, is, this is Candy Waller. Please tell everybody about yourself and where you where you're from. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no. I'm my name is Candy Waller. I'm the CEO and founder of Seaball Sports and Entertainment, and I am a native of Prince George's County, a lover of all things sports, but especially DMV sports. Um, so maybe about three years ago now, um. In a nutshell, I was doing the Super Bowl really, really big. I've always truly loved every single thing about sports. And I was basically having the ultimate fan experience. And it really popped into my spirit. This is what you need to do. This is where you need to be. Um, I was going to um, Undisputed, First Take, and Good Morning Football live, like in the live studio audience, and just sitting in that okay. environment and just taking it all up. Soaking it all up, yeah. This is what I this is what I know I want to do and I can do. So, and the rest is history. All right. Well, you have a passion for it. I've been checking you out for a while, following you, and um, I know that you've been having an opportunity to work with some of the best. Like you said, just been following it and grasping it all in. Um, it's a craft. Um, so tell us a little bit about meeting some of the people that you have working in the field, like uh, Phil Chenier, Steve Buckhantz. Uh, mm -hmm. So you got an opportunity to meet Stephen A. Smith. What, who are some of the people that you look up to in this industry, and what are some of the things that you learned over the past year to working in uh, sports reporter field? Yeah, absolutely. So my absolute favorite sports broadcaster is no longer with us in the land of living. That's George Michael, because I grew up on the George Michael sports machine. That's that was okay. my favorite show. <laughs> um, but late nights on Sunday, and we used to have a show. Absolutely. Yep. That was, I mean, that was like the epitome of knowing every single thing. Yeah, I had to watch that before I go to sleep. <laughs> all in 30 minutes. And 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 that just, that's always been um, an approach that I admired. Um, okay. As you said, um, Steve Buckhead, Phil Chenier, all wonderful people. Doris Burke. I had the pleasure of meeting Doris Burke when I first, um, you know, NBA analyst, Doris Burke when I first started in the business and her um, her energy and her spirit and her overall words of encouragement, she was so welcoming to me. And I met her in New York at a Women in Sports and Events um, Summit in which she was okay. one of the honorees and she was fantastic. Um, Stephen A. Smith, you see, you what you see is what you get. Okay. <laughs> he, exact same way and it actually took my fourth time being in his presence to actually be comfortable talking to him um because he's 
intimidating. Like, okay. He was hard to approach. It took you a while to get there to approach him. And, he, and he's intimidating. Not that he is trying to be. I just think that that's just... He's a big personality. Yeah. He's a big personality. It's Stephen A. Smith. But in that fourth time engaging with him and being in his presence, it really was as media colleagues and being able to talk about the Wizards. He was actually at one of the Wizards games and I was covering the Wizards that night. And it, we were colleagues, we were we were alongside each other. I mean, of course he had a better seat, but at the same time in, in the background, in the media room, in the locker room, we're, we're media colleagues, so. That's great. Yeah. Yep. So did you go to school for this or you just decided to pick it up? I know you said you had a passion for it. Did you decide to, you know, I know a lot of people are learning about the business and may want to get started and stuff like that. Did you go to school for uh, the communications or you decided to pick it up once you just maybe got out and had another ambition to do something else? So I actually did. I did not initially go to school for it. Um, I'm a Hampton University graduate. Shout out to my HBCUs. Um, and then I have a graduate degree from GW as well in human resources. Congratulations. So once I got into sports, I did get into Columbia University Sports Industry Essentials Program, and okay. I completed that. Um, and it was helpful. It was very, very helpful because that was just the sports industry as a whole. So any hot topics, um, new trends in sports, I learned a lot about um, like esports and data analytics and the use of okay. analytics overall. Um, in determining like athletes and their brand, you know, how fast they run, baseball pitchers, how fast they throw, and how they okay. have all of these different gadgets <laughs> in their uniforms to yeah, track. Yeah, a lot of analytics. They change the game. Exactly. A lot of yeah. analytics changing the game for sure. So it, it, it's very helpful and just broadening my network as well is very helpful. Okay. Now, I know that, uh, like you were talking about the you know, the overall perspective of sports, as much as you were learning, is it's, it's a business, especially with the women in business. Who are some of the women that you look at? You know, you, tell, you, told, you told us about meeting Doris Burke. I see that you were, um, actually, you've been traveling a lot. I don't know if you were actually part of the, uh, the, the Sports Power Brunch. They had a few uh, months back where they were celebrating the women in sports. Uh, Gina Scott, Pam Oliver. Can you tell us what it means to you about being a woman that's actually taking on her own business? I celebrate you on that. And then just the competition and some of the obstacles that you had, you know, uh, along the way. Um, You know, one of the main obstacles, I mean, as you said, the Sports Power Brunch, all the heavy hitters that are women in sports are at this brunch. Okay. Um, again, everybody is so welcoming. It wasn't like I, if if somebody was extra shady to me, I would tell y'all. No, nobody's been like extra shady because some folks are just busy. And during that week, that was during Super Bowl week. Okay. Some people are on a time schedule. They gotta they gotta go. You know, so if the, their fifteen minutes here is literally their fifteen minutes here, so they gotta go to the show somewhere else. They gotta go make an appearance other places. Um, and Pam Oliver, I know a lot of people may joke on Pam. But Pat Oliver is the GOAT. Like, she is literally, when she walks in the room, people stop. In journalism, okay. she is one of the GOATs. Like, it just is what it is. She's so well-respected and so elegant, eloquent. And she's actually a fun person. She's she's cool. Um, but being in the business is probably more so from an entrepreneurial um, perspective. Okay. Um, that I'm still getting my ground in. But once people know... Especially, well, both men and women. Oh, like, you started your own company? Like, you doing it? Like, wait. They're like, whoa, that's huge. Um, and I get a lot of props and kudos from that for my peers. So that, that's what we do. That's awesome. I want to salute you on that as well. Um, actually, I want to talk to you a little bit about one of your favorite teams to see you representing your burgundy and gold right now. I want to have a little bit of fun real quick. I want to talk to you about it the last couple of days. I've been talking to everybody about their favorite players and some of that. Everybody's an analyst and they're great. So I want to talk to you about how do you feel about your 2020 draft class? I've been watching your page. You've been giving highlights to all your picks. Yeah. Who do you feel like stood out to you? And who are you looking forward to seeing the most besides Chase Young, of course? I'm sure Chase Young is at the top of your list. But who are some of the sleepers and what's your overall grade on your draft? Tell us a little bit about it. 
Um, so yeah, it's like other than Chase, right? Chase got eight A pluses across the board. I think that hidden gem for this draft is Antonio Gandy Golden. Um, the wide receiver out of Liberty. Yes. Um former Redskins Santana Moss has been talking about this guy all year. He was like, this guy, this guy. you know, Liberty, like, you know, because you always want to tie yourself to the big school. Yeah. But um, then Fred Swoop got on that, you know, Antonio Gandy Golden um, train. And watching some of those highlights, I think that was the name that I did not, I wasn't tracking at all. I got and you. And when the Redskins picked him, I was like, but, uh, but, it, but across for the analysts, huge kudos, huge kudos for sure. I was watching the draft, and I did. I did get a chance to check him out. I see that he was a he was an under the radar player, but I know that he was at home in Lynchburg. His family was all excited. It looked like he was like one of them players that he's actually, I think, like six four or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So he's a tall receiver. He's gonna he cause some problems in the NFC East. I, I could see that being a problem. He's an under the radar player, and I did see that. Um, what about on the defensive side of the ball? I know y'all made some moves on the defense. Who do you think y'all picked up? I think Chase Young's going to help bring some pressure. Did you pick up some other people on defense that we need to keep an eye on? So one of the last picks, I think it was James um, James Smith. He was probably like the best player available. That was the last Redskins pick that came over. And, and, and I got big things from, from that perspective, but I want to mention from a free agency perspective. Okay. One thing that, that I think is going to be good that was a pickup is getting Kendall Fuller back. Um, that was huge. Yeah, getting Kendall Fuller back into the fold, getting Ronald Darby. Um, and that was huge as well. And I know you know Ronald Darby because you're an Eagle fan, right? Okay. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, he, yeah. Was that, he was on that Super Bowl champion team. I don't know how to Yes, he was. But I, I really like the addition of those guys on defense because okay. um, they, got that super, they got that championship pack. You know what I'm saying? So they'll bring that mentality into the locker room, which is a much needed mentality. As you That's true. Break. That's so, true. He's actually a great player. He has local ties as well from Fort Washington. So I always got I always got love of Ronald Darby. Actually y'all picked up a couple of undrafted free agents. What's your opinion on Randy Moss son? That is Moss. Do you so, think he's got an opportunity to make the squad? So I do. I think he has an opportunity to make the squad. I was a little disappointed originally because I have been talking for like since like October, that the Reds did need a tight end. I'm like, Reds need a okay. tight end. Reds need a tight end. And so when they didn't draft one, I'm like, of all the positions, you don't draft the tight end. So I got you. Thaddeus Moss ends up not getting drafted because I was kind of shocked he didn't get drafted. So yeah, I, I was surprised too. He may have gone down with that cool and the surgery he had with that. But I do think that he has great blocking skills. I know there's some concern about that foot and what um, Redskins, I, I want to call him the GM, but he's not the GM. Um, Kyle Smith um, shared with local media is that the Redskins medical staff don't see a foresee an issue with it that would potentially hinder him from playing, he's been healing and progressing nicely. So that was not a deterrent in signing him. Um, after the draft, immediately okay. after the draft. Yeah. All right. Well, I know you got an opportunity to, to spend a lot of time down at Redskins Park. We want to talk about that a little bit? You being a Redskins insider, I know you were down there. You got a chance to see the training camp, the staff. How do you feel about Ron Rivera, Riverboat Ron coming in? So far, have you seen dramatic changes? I know you're being an insider. Have you seen a difference since he's been there? Already seen a difference. Um, you know, one of the one of the it wasn't a big story, but it was a big story to me. You know, the Redskins used to have, like, games, you know, pool tables and all that kind of stuff in the locker room. And that was one of the first things that Ron got rid of when okay. he got here. And I was like, yes, good, no games in the locker the room. The game is over. <laughs> He's a 3-13 and 13 team and, yeah. and, and, and want to play in the locker room. Um, you get what I'm saying? So Absolutely. he's already bringing that right attitude. I also have to get a, give a shout out to Ron because going back to the draft and one of the big moves, which I'm sure, you know, we may get to, but just 
the whole Trent Williams thing, the whole Quentin Dunbar thing, if there was ever a question about whether or not someone wanted to be on the team, Ron wanted to bid them a do and say, we're going we gonna to set you somewhere else nice. We're going go wherever else you want to go, but you won't be here. Because he didn't want those lingering attitudes. So I already respect Ron as a leader in that way, that he only wants people in his locker room that want to. I agree. He's well respected around the league. He said he had a no-nonsense attitude, and that was his first thing to say, get rid of the video games, and let's get to work. So you, you know got to respect what? that. I you think that Ron's a... Yeah. <laughs> so who are some of your Redskins favorites that you have met since you've been down there? I see Santana Mars, Brian Mitchell. You got an opportunity to hang out with some of the greats, Doug yeah. Williams. Who are some of the people that you've admired and that you got an opportunity to meet that you were like, wow, they actually... Seem exactly like I thought they were going to be, or maybe they all them guys didn't come off. Cool, man. Like, I got you. I'm not even sizing it. All, all those guys are really cool. I got to admit, Fran Smooth is one of my favorites. Fran okay. Smooth. He's hilarious. He's hilarious. Like, he, <laughs> he's not even trying to be. He's just oh, he's you. from Mississippi. He just all of his analogies and examples of how he deals with life is yeah. just ridiculous. But it's funny, and it still makes sense. But these guys, you know, what I appreciate about the alumni is that they are more diehard than the fans are. They want to see the Redskins win more than anybody. And they tired of the Redskins losing to they sick of it. So, <laughs> you know, Brian Mitchell it don't get no more real than Brian Mitchell. He's going to tell somebody. I got you. Make Oh, I love Brian Mitchell. He's for me. He was well. I love listening to him on 9 He's going to keep it 100, as they say, and I like listening to him. Well, I want to talk to you about some of the... Too. All those guys, oh, Doc? going to keep it 100 all the time. Yes. I met Doc Walker. I got a chance to meet him a couple of times. I'm actually uh, a very big fan of Doc Walker. Like you said, guys, is always going to keep it honest and keep it 100. So that's, right. that's you know, I like right. that. That's... That's what I like, uh, cut from that cloth. I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the other teams in the area. I know that they've been having a, uh, a nice run here. You know, the, the Nats, the Mystics, the Valor. Um, tell us a little bit about your love and passion and covering some of the other teams. Tell us what are some of the biggest moments throughout the year that you were able to experience and just capture the moment, whether you were at home or covering it. Tell us some, some of the, the things that were exciting to you and your biggest moments throughout the year. Absolutely. So for sure, last year, the Mystics Championship won. Um, I was blessed and able to be on the Mystics local media roster for the whole season. And it meant so much to me because once you get into like the final round of the play, you know, not even the championship round, but the final round, you know, before that, um, in the conference finals, you have to apply the Mystics you know, leadership is out of it. You have to apply with the WNBA. And so I was able to apply and get those media credentials straight from the WNBA before directly to the WNBA for the Eastern um, Conference Finals and then for the WNBA Championship. And that was something else. Like, you know, to actually smell the champagne in the locker room and just be right there and experience that moment. The balloons and the confetti and where everything is going to go. And, um, and the Wizards, John Wall, Bradley Beal, they were at like every single last one of these of these girls' games. And they were cheering just as loud. I mean, they were fans. At that time, yeah. yes, they're colleagues, but they yes. were fans. And they were hyped. And it, it, was, it, was a, it was a beautiful thing. That is by far for my DC sports experience at Seawall Sports and Entertainment. It's been a huge, huge thing I will never forget. My first championship. Okay. Then after that, of course, the Nets, because I remember after some of the uh, Mystics before we go on to the next, let me ask you one quick question because I had this on the top of my mind about the Mystics. I know people are not talking about it. I want to ask you about two players real quick. They lost uh, one of their big players, uh, their point guard. Christy Tolliver, yeah. Christy Tolliver, but they're bringing in Tina Charles. Do you think yeah. that loss and the acquisition is going to be uh, some things that's going to change them or hurt them from getting the chance to go back to repeat for a championship? I hate that they lost Christy. I, I'm going to be honest. I, I really, and look, and my father hates it more than me because my father is a big Christy Tolliver fan. But I hate that they lost Christy. I, 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 I,
But um, that really bothered me because I really like Chris. You know, as a person, yeah. you know, she's one of the Wizards assistant coaches. High basketball IQ. Absolute her basketball IQ, her leadership. She's a competitor. Um, and I wanted to see her stay. And, and as much as they gave up now, transitioning to Tina Charles, as yes. much as they gave up for Tina, I, I, that was a lot to give up for one player. That was a whole lot. Um, and I don't agree with how much they gave up for Tina. However, what I think is, Alina Deladon has these back issues. Okay. So, because remember, she had some issues throughout the playoffs. Yeah, she it sure did. Championship where I it wasn't sure for a minute. When they lost her, I was like this. Exactly. That was scary. But I think her back issues are probably a lot more serious okay. than is what is being publicly shared. Okay. And then they put all the chips on the table to get Tina because it's a win now and we'll worry about the rest later. I and got probably you. Probably when they worry about the rest later, we'll probably see a later Della Dawn retire or something like that. I got you. Okay, well, I'm, I didn't mean to cut you off. You could pick up. You were talking about your Nets a little bit. Yes, uh, tell us a little bit about your Nets. Um, but no, with the, with the Nets, I'm surprised that they didn't get Kyrie Irving. Some of the nights that there were WNBA, like, Mystics games during the playoffs, yes. we would, they would let us in the entertainment and sports arena outside the arena. Okay. And they would let us in the entertainment and sports arena outside the entertainment and sports arena outside the They would let us turn the big TV on, the, like, the big screen. Okay. And finish watching the Nets game. Okay. And we was hyped, you know what I mean? Because we in there with the Mystics and we were reporting for the Mystics and some of the fans yeah. could stay as well. And and that was so much fun up until the night that I, I and and the great thing about the Nats and I see some of my Seawall team members, I, I, I Logan and I see folks chiming chiming in on the chat here. Um, I used to drag the Nats real bad. You know, I used to talk about them terrible. When they were doing that, I used to be like, oh, my God, they think. So hey, he turned it around. I used to I used to go to the games when the tickets were so cheap. I know I was a, I'm a Phillies fan, so I was in there laughing. Not this year. I was not laughing this year. I was not laughing. But at the beginning of the season, you yeah. were laughing because they were yeah. terrible. Yeah, so, yeah, they were at the beginning of the year. They were terrible. Right to see them make that complete shift. Yeah. Unreal, unreal, totally unexpected. I I I would not have guessed the Nats winning the World Series. Okay. And, oh, so they lost the key so, player as well. Did you think they have an opportunity to come back? They lost. Uh, I think it's Rendier. Um, yeah, Anthony Rendon. They lost Anthony. And Anthony Rendon. Rendon. Excuse me. Yeah, they lost him, but they did sign. The, they still bring it back that strong pitching staff. How do you feel their chances are repeating? I know there's a lot of stuff going on right now, but I'm gonna be honest with you. Okay. I thought the, the Nets and the Mystics, both of them equally, have a great chance of repeating in their in their respective sports for sure. Okay. Um, who knows what's gonna happen with everything with COVID nineteen and the different seasons. Um, but I felt like the Nets were the team to beat, even with losing Anthony went down in the whole season. Okay. I know you talked about John and Bill's relationship a little bit. I want to talk to you just briefly about that. I'm a big Wizards fan. I know everybody think I got a lot of Philly ties, but I'm a big Wizards fan. I love watching him. One thing I like about Ted Leonis, he seemed like to be a very loyal guy. That's like one of his characteristics. And I've seen it, like you said, the players were out there watching and supporting each other during that run. Do you think they have enough what it, t uh, enough what it takes to get back in? I, I like Rui. The pick up they had the rookie. Do you think they'll be able to compete next year to get in the playoffs next year with a healthy John back? Next year with a healthy John, yes. Next year with a healthy John, you know, I, I hate that this season, of course, we all hate it, right, as sports fans, we all hate the season that just take a halt and all of that. Because I wanted this, this year to really, for the young guys to have an opportunity to understand and learn the NBA way of doing things out there on the court. Um, I've been totally impressed with Brad and how he's led the team without John. But I am just hoping the Wizards, we still see that Brad when John get back. Right? The aggressive the leader, leader and aggressive mentality. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's the part that I don't know, right? But I hope okay. Brad is that elevated Brad with John coming in and they could be a powerhouse together for Bill Bates. 
You know how that I start seeing it turn the corner a little bit when Paul Pierce was here. I start seeing the aggressive Bradley Bill. He started breaking yeah. out of that. And I think yeah. both of them are fathers now in the maturity. I think that they just basically look like, hey, let's put all the nonsense behind us and let's go try to win. Key, key message right there. They're both fathers now. Things change. So I've heard, you know, when you become a parent, everything, your, your, you know, your, life, your whole perspective on life changes. And we all know that John went through the devastating loss of his mother last year, the end of last year. So that had that, that shifts your perspective for yes. sure, certainly. But I do know and truly believe that John and Brad want to try to do this together. I believe I so too. So hard. All right. Well, I want to know you got a lot of your team here. I want to thank everybody for joining us. Can you please tell us about where to follow your radio show? I think it was on Tuesdays at 7.30 p.m., oh, if I'm not correct. Right. It's on Thursdays at 7.30 Thursdays. on okay. the Seawall Sports and Entertainment Facebook page. We go live okay. on Thursday. Now, sometimes, like last week, for example, we did a couple of uh, draft specials. So whenever there's a uh, change in the time, we will announce that. But um, every Thursday, 7.30, Seawall Sports and Entertainment Facebook page. And you can follow the at Seawall Sports page here on Instagram and Facebook. I want to thank you for taking your time out. I want to bring you on. Please uh, come on again anytime you like. I want to talk to you about all the great things you're doing. I want to salute you first and foremost. And I've been following you for years. And you motivate a lot of people. Little do you know. And I just want to take my hat off to you and just say congratulations on all the big things you're doing. And uh, I'd like to bring you on any time and come back and talk about some of the any 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 of the teams you want to talk about. Yeah, you know, maybe during the season. Hit me up like you did. Hit me up, and I'm and I'm happy to do it. Happy all right. To do it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh yeah. Thank you. Every bye bye. Thank you. 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 Thank